Welcome to On The Line With. I'm your host, Handling. On The Line With is an arts podcast with a deep dive on mental health, substance abuse, and many social issues and causes at the forefront of our society. Join me every second Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern as I sit with various guests to discuss their art, personal stories, and inspiration from behind the microphone. You'll be on the line with me, Handling, every second Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. Back to On The Line with Season 2, Episode 11. We got a very special guest in the building today. Saved my life. I lost the interview with Cap City Vibes, so I had to find a replacement quick. So I hollered at my boy. I'm going to let him introduce yourself so you know who he is. Ottawa artist. Go ahead, my dude. Introduce yourself. It's your boy OCN, a.k.a. OC34N. I'm with my good friend, Hanley. Been a long time, bro. Been a very long time, man. Probably 15 years, maybe. Yeah, but you know what? I'm happy to be sitting across the table with you right now, you know? Yeah, I'm glad, man. I'm happy you're here. We go back. We got a lot of mutual friends. We know a lot of mutual people. Yeah, you know? So. uh, It's nice to see a familiar face on this, too, you know? Yeah. It means means we're doing something still. We care enough about this craft to still be here. Exactly. We're still still in the scene in our respective ways. Mm -hmm. You were making music when I was making music, so that was a decade plus ago. What were you going by then again? Probably like De Niro or like oh, Sinatra, yeah. some, something yeah, Italian. Sinatra, yeah, yeah, some, yeah, that's what it, I'm pretty sure it was that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then what made you change to the name now? What's the meaning behind the name? Uh, well, my my Italian name is Adriana, which means the Adriatic Sea. So one of my main influences was Tupac Shakur, and his name was literally just Tupac. So I was like, how do I make a name that's true to me, but still not exactly me? I can be a little more artistic with it. So I said, OC34N. And people are like, are you 34 years old? Like, why the 34? But 34 is a really spiritual number for me. And it's also a prisoner number for one of my favorite books, The Count of Monte Cristo. And I feel like once I became OC34N, it was like a rebirth of who I was musically and just where I was going in life. I feel like De Niro was something I wasn't trying to be or in Sinatra. It was very negative, you know? You know me back then. It wasn't... My music was okay, but it wasn't. It didn't feel genuine enough to me, and now was, I feel like it wasn't as artistic as it is now. No, I was too afraid to be artistic. I just wanted to be. And at that time, it wasn't like it was still kind of like that East Coast, like you know what I mean. I was trying to be Jay Z. I was trying to be whoever was popular. Yeah. Like that's what I wanted to be. You know, and yeah. that, that's not me. Yeah, nowadays people are more like in tune with their art. I like demanding. consider myself more like a performance artist than I a rapper, you know? Like I'm more into poetry than I am to I'm not a battle rapper. I can appreciate the art, but for me it's more I love the feeling of music. I love the words. I love the sounds to it. It's not so much, yo, how bravado can I be? How can I diss this guy? I don't want to diss anyone. Like if you don't like me, don't listen to my shit. Like let's just make some music. Let's just make art. Like let me direct something for you. It's not about me being the best at anything. Like, my goal right now is just to be community involved. And so, when I saw what you were doing, it really connected to me. Like, I was talking to one of my friends, like, I know I really want to do something with my music that involves community and really touch on anxiety because that's something that I struggle with a lot. So, when I saw that you were doing something for mental health, like, this is just like, it just fell into my lap. It's like divine timing, you know? Yeah. So, when you invited things me, it's perfect. full circle sometimes. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man, definitely. Well, I appreciate you saying that, and I appreciate that you related to it in, in a way that you wanted to be part of it when I invited you, because not everybody wants to take part in the conversations, and I can understand that. Don't get me wrong. Not everybody has the the heart to want to, like, dive into, like, their heart. But, I mean, you know, as an artist, too, like, what you do is very vulnerable, especially now. Like, you literally have to put your whole life and like... A lot of people don't understand what that does to you mentally. Like, you post a picture on Instagram, you post a song, maybe five people like it. But this song, you're talking about the worst that you had in your life. And this writing this song saved your life, and nobody cares. And But to you, it's like, yo, if I didn't write this song today, I probably would have did something stupid, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm sure you relate to that easily, yeah. you know? Oh, no, absolutely, 100%. But people think you're just being vain, like, you know? Like, oh, Henley's just posting, he just wants people it's, to listen to it. It's not. It's different now, because, like, as, when I was a rapper or a hip-hop artist, like, it was a it was a different image that I could put on and maintain and like mm-hmm. you know like you just have that lifestyle or put on that facade for like for but don't the, you feel for like nowadays the gram but now I'm actually putting my actual like 
but that's what I mean. Personal face on like a brand where as before I was like trying to like live two lives basically. You know what I mean? And it's it's hard to like it's hard to explain. I don't know if I'm explaining myself right. I have a hard time like explaining it still because I'm still new to this venture here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think before when I was a hip hop artist, I was like more. It was Hanley. It was just. That's what it was, and now it's like the actual person people get to know is like the actual Hanley. They're gonna know on mic or off mic. You know what I mean? So, but I think like who you were then, like when you were G Dub, it wasn't that it wasn't you. It's just like we were we were all so young at the time, like we didn't know who we were, so we just had this bravado, this outer shell of what we thought was who we were supposed to be. You know, and it was just one side. I mean, if you only know one side of one person, then they're gonna be super sweet, super arrogant, an asshole, or like super funny. But like when you the older you get, the more you realize why you do the things you do. And I feel like your journey maybe would have took longer than you thought or maybe not where you want to be. But I feel like you're becoming who you are right now. And yeah. what I see what you're doing is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's funny because speaking of like our past, you said G'd up and then I went to Hanley later on. But like you said, you're De Niro, Sinatra, etc. But like when we were in that like era, me and you clashed, I'm pretty sure, a couple times on stupid shit. I'm sure. And like now it's just like at first like when I was... Like, I fo- I've been following your music and shit, but I was apprehensive just to, like, reach out because I was like, I don't know where, like, our blood stands on shit, you know? So I'm, Same. like, looking at it, and I'm like, I know he fucks with Split. That's Michael my brother, Lebon. bro. That's your brother, yeah. too, you know? So, like, I know he fucks with him, so I was just like, the other day I saw you reply. I forget how it came about yesterday, but this started up yesterday. <laughs> yeah, divine timing, man. Divine timing <laughs> but for yeah, sure. So I was just like, I was like, fuck it. I just reached out and I was like, if someone can fucking save the show, I'm going to holler at someone. So it was good timing. But I was so. thinking about it. I was like, yo, I remember us having a little friction too, but I was like, I don't even know what it was. Like, we never, I never said anything to you. You never said anything to me. It was just, I think we we're just so trying to be who we were that there was no room for anyone else. Yeah, like, yeah. that happened between me and Split too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we never clashed, but it was always like, well, this is what I'm trying to do. Like, why are you copying me? Like, I'm the best one in the group. You know what I mean? Like, now we have a friendly competition but i mean it's hard in the beginning especially when you're young like we didn't know anything about music we thought you just make a song we put it out we'll be millionaires tomorrow exactly. now you know there's a business there's you gotta pay you gotta you gotta grind for years you know what i mean definitely yeah no definitely how long have you been the new name that you're going by now i think my for when i did my first project holy water it has to be at least like five or six more than yeah oh uh, like Maybe. 2015 2016 yeah i was gonna say 2015 16 yeah. i was pretty sure like because like i was still i was on instagram at the time then but like i wasn't on facebook but like i was on instagram so i think i saw you pop up around then at that time because i was still talking to mike a little bit at that time if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. i might have been i don't know i don't know where i was at that time anymore so when you changed the artist name, did you find like the demographics and the response for your music get better? Or? I find that the people who really knew me were more accepting of it. Like when I would go to a studio and I'd be like, they'd be like, oh, what's your rap name? Like Sinatra or De Niro. It kind of gave me a reputation that wasn't me. So when you met me, I didn't really talk. You know, I, I told you I was very anxious. I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought everyone was the enemy when I went. I had yeah. to, I feel like I had to be the best rapper or whatever so I, I couldn't be your friend like the engineer was wrong i know what's going on it was just arrogant so I, I needed to change and be a completely different person i had to ground myself and i feel like being oc 34n ocean ocn whatever you want to call me really helped me find my way yeah or i didn't, find my I didn't way, know you, know you know? said it o- oc 34n at first so i just thought it was ocean to be honest it is ocean but yeah. a lot of people like that so now i just I make it clear. It kind of works with the nautical theme of ocean. You know, it looks yeah. like the, the docking of a ship or something. Yeah, it does, actually, now that I think about it. You're right. Plus, I find it was a lot easier to play. Like, if I see an ocean, I can use the metaphors, the... You know what I mean? Whereas De Niro, it's like, okay, gangsters. Like, yeah. I'm either acting or I'm a gangster or I'm Italian. It's like such a small part of who I am. It's like yeah. when you were G'd up. It's like, that's such a small part of who you are. But you have like, this whole life. You know what I mean? You have a family. You have a mom. You have cousins. You have friends a job you know what i mean like, yeah exactly no i hear you definitely with that being said in your music videos it, it, a lot of the work that's behind them are you at directing them all yourself i usually write my own video treatments i come with ideas and then i try to find the best director that can help me express it but i also i don't like to say this is what i want this is what we're going to do if you can't do it it's like i have this idea this is what's really important what do you think about it how do you how does this make you feel like I hate telling a, a director these are my ideas. I give him the song and let them think about it, and then let's come together. And I find it usually works. Like 
But my, my everyone always says like my music videos aren't like anyone else's, which I take as a compliment. Like they don't well, give me millions of views, but they're mine. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I see the ideas. I find out of videos, like visuals, like your videos stand out a lot more than other artists in the city. And I really want to do that for other people. And there's some artists in the city who have some great visuals. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. But, like it depends on who's directing them and who's. It's also who's editing them, too. I mean, not every director is an editor, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> you know, and like, yeah, I, I'm learning, they have the fancy I'm learning camera that myself. And yeah. the, the Gibbs, but when they put this together, it's like, yo, why, would, why would you put the, me doing that awkward face, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't make sense. I'm learning that, and filming podcasts is a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> so, who does a lot of your film work, the, uh, the filming, is it... Uh, 350 code that I see a lot of it behind it. I have a really good relationship with 350 specifically like Jaden. He does a lot, but most recently I've been working with a younger guy at Fenty Films. Oh, I, I've seen him on a few projects from a few people. I, I really like him. We connected like we're both Italian. So I was like, this is perfect. Like I, I want to incorporate my culture into this too. You know, I don't want to seem like I'm a culture vulture. I understand this is not, it's not, it's not it doesn't originate from, from my people. You know what I mean? It doesn't originate from this country. You know what I mean? But it's like, I want to be respectful, but I need to bring my influence into it you know yeah i want to share something they, they they i feel like this music has given me so much and i feel like you relate to that it's only right that i'd be just as vulnerable and just as open and give you a part of me you know? yeah and you've always wanted to stick to your roots with the choice of your names whether it was sinatra or de niro regardless you could tell just off the bat yes yeah, but i tried like later on like you could tell that you put a lot of thought and ideas into like your new image like how you want to portray yourself as an artist it's important to me that I'm me. Like, even if I'm making food, I have to make it my own. You know what I mean? It's mac and cheese is mac and cheese. Anyone can make it. But let me do it the way that I like it, you know? Yeah, just throw some Italian spice on it. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like I'm really stubborn in that way. But it's like that's what people appreciate about me, you know? And if I do something for someone, it's like I, I need to make sure that it's theirs. It's Irish people are the same way, man. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're awful. <laughs> like both of us. <laughs> I can see why we might have clashed when we were younger now. Now we're like, nah, nah, I think about it. I feel like because we're very similar. That's what I mean. We're yeah. both trying to do the same thing in our own it's, right. And it's funny only... looking at those days now because those, in those days you're like, I'm never going to forget this shit. <laughs> and then like you don't forget it, but it's 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 laughable after more than a more... I miss like, those days to yeah. be honest, man. So do I, man. <laughs> I hate being this age. <laughs> I know, it's like, yo, I woke up one day, and I'm, I'm old, and I'm still doing this music, and it's not giving me what I want. It's like our talk about TikTok earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, I was I sick. feel so out of touch with it, but it's like, I never liked doing dances when I was young. Why would I do it now? For a paycheck? Like, nah, it's yeah, not it, me, bro. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, my, like, my motto is, like, give back, not give in, bro. Like, I, you know, like, I can't do it. It like, won't be, people, they're just gonna laugh at me because it's not me. You know what I mean? Those views that you're getting are people laughing, bro. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, but to get into, like, uh, like uh, social media, like your Instagram, I noticed the photos you've been posting recently. You're posting them, like, are they supposed to look like old slides? I tried to make like, a compilation so it's very condensed. Because you see, like, half a photo and then you go to the next slide. It's, like, the other half. I wanted there. to seem like 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 film like a, strips, you know? Like, uh, almost like a panorama, like, look of it. Yeah, uh, I wanted it to seem like an art gallery of my life. Is it panorama or a panorama? Mm, I think panorama is the thing that pops out at you, see, isn't it? not a video guy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just wanted it to seem like moments in my life and, like, people forget. Like, people don't know what I did four years ago because you're always updating yourself, right? So when I... Updating my projects last summer from 2016, people were like, I didn't even know you did this. And the quality is the same, but I didn't know how to market back then. It's like if you, when you first did your podcast last or two years ago, it's not going to be the same way you do your podcast today. So imagine just updating that, you know? And I, I've learned that your music, if your music is good, it's timeless. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not so big. Art that, is like, timeless, right? That's what I mean. Like, my, my music and is priceless. not so big. Yeah. Like, my music is not so big that, like, Oh, people have already heard this. No one cares. There's a m- billions of people who've never heard my shit. You know, I can keep updating that. Yeah, no, definitely. I know modeling is an art, so I've tapped into like the local model scene in the Ottawa mm-hmm. area. I see you work with a couple local models. That actually was just like a spur. I found like when I tried to do music videos, I'd always try to find a girl, and they would always flop. Yeah. So I, I knew uh, this guy named Jafari, actually. I asked him, I was like, he does some modeling. Do you know any girls who are solid? Like, it's a paid gig. It's nothing inappropriate. Fully respectable. 
and he referred me to Christine, who's Frozen Neptune. Yeah. And the first shoot we did was like amazing. She showed up, she brought props, you know, she followed through. And to this day, even if she's not a part of the project, she'll promote it. You know what I mean? I've gotten lots of followers and fans just through that. So whenever I do meet someone who's solid, like, that's what I love about this work that we do. Like, just meeting like-minded creatives. Like, you don't have to be a rapper or a singer. Like, you can paint, you can do whatever you want. I just love being that type of energy. If you're creative, yeah. I love it, man. Like, that, what you're doing, like, you're just talking, but it's creative in the way you're doing it. And that's why I was like, yo, for sure I'm going to come in here and do this, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely a totally different venture. Like, I didn't think I would, like, enjoy it the way I've enjoyed it. As I went moving forward with it, I was just doing it because I was like, I didn't have anything else to do and COVID was annoying as fuck. So, and I wasn't making music and I didn't think I was going to be making music. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I am making music. I feel like you always make music. <laughs> I write a lot. That means you're a true artist. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of different people, like, different stories on the show for, like, music and, like, everybody is always talking about, like, like accolades maybe or, like... Someone else is hyping up. They're the greatest in their city. <laughs> People know who they are. <laughs> and I, I don't shy away from it. People know that I make my sarcastic shit. Oh, that's what man. I like about it, because you know? it's raw. Like, you know? I just... Peop, that's probably why like <laughs> some people don't like me if they don't know that I'm joking it, I'm like I'm laughing with you not at you you know a lot of the artists like I feel like some of the artists I interview and like not all of them but like some of them that I've interviewed like they remind me of me <laughs> but 15 years ago and yeah. I'm like that's weird to me man like like you shouldn't remind me like remind me of me at that time you know what I mean mm. I should feel like you're more mature but some people just never leave the bravado at home and, like, and, and i hate that scene in the artist because i know i would hope that they really care about the craft but you see the mistakes so easily you know mm -hmm. but i thought about doing a podcast too and i was just like my heart's not in it as much you know i see people like you doing it it's just like who am i to like step into this arena without giving it my all you know it's see, not something you can do lightly you know like cap city vibes was talking about well, she is going to be doing interviews with people. Mm -hmm. And, like, we had, like, an exchange. I really hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. I'm sorry if she does, but we had an exchange. She said, like, I didn't know if I should do interviews because you were doing interviews. Something along the lines of that. Don't quote me word for word. But if I need to, I'll get a screenshot. <laughs> but, no, just joking aside, like, I was like, no. Like, you know, like, do what you want to do. Like, in, like if... There's so much you, space. There's, like... a, there's a story that an artist didn't tell me that... That you can get, you know what I mean? Like, like, the stories that me and you can have won't be the same with another artist here, you know what I mean? They can be from Ottawa. That's what I. That's why when she mentioned Jay, she's like, oh, you're talking to Adriana. Or Ocean. Ocean. <laughs> and I was like, oh, me and Adriana go way back, like, here. So I'm like, still, like, do it, you know? Like, yeah. It's, I feel like people think, like, oh, if I go and, like, do this, it's going to be, like, just the same as someone else's no. and a lot of the times sometimes it is maybe when you're media trained the but. idea like behind it's the same like the motives are behind it's the same but me with like no background in like journalism i don't research like my artist i would guess like i should like i should have like a piece of paper beside me right now with like facts about you like you know like but i don't like i'm <laughs> i'm gonna get if but I that's don't know style, it, I'm bro. gonna. I'm just gonna. Have to, it's like I'm still freestyling, man. Like yeah. you know, I just do it off like the top, like the whole time. So, yeah. Like, and that's another thing. Like I don't see a lot of people do that. So I find a lot of shit scripted nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like you can't tell me like a lot of these podcasts that are filmed aren't like they're not a one take job, bro. You can tell when there's edits. And, you know, and, like they're like, yo, try to remember what you just said in that last piece. Well, let me see what I said in that last piece. You know, they go back and they just check it and they have the conversation over, yeah. you know, and they just look better. Yeah. You know, it's a better angle. And I'm like, bro, it's produced. Like if they, you don't need a producer if it's one take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like one take. Even when you I'm know, filming, like, yo, if we can do this in one shot, let's do it. That's what I mean, man. If I stumble, fine. Just keep rolling, bro. Just keep rolling. Yeah. And like, that's other than touching up the audio and like fixing like the voices and stuff. Like that's all I really do yeah. until I, with when I start filming them and stuff, there might be some, like, edits, but it's going to be because, like, I have different cameras, so I have different angles, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's still one take. But that's something you can do, like, in the future, too, you know? You don't have to get it all right, yeah. perfect right now. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get it perfect either, you know what I mean? Like, I'd, no. I'd rather just stumble along the way. But 
being here with you just feels comfortable. Like this is not polished, but it's like <laughs> I've gotten I'm kicking. That, it's like I'm with the homies right now. We're just talking shit. I've gotten that with like Justin Diamond, like uh, Diamond from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Castro, like mm-hmm. shout out Castro. We've had, yeah, sure. we've had like our the same conversation like you were just saying right there it's like it just feels like back in the day i'm like see that's what i like because like i'm still connected to the scene like whether it's like that era Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong they're still rapping they're still top tier auto artists especially justin diamond he's on a fucking wave lately he's really i've seen the hard work i don't know Um, him personally but i've seen the way he was before and what he's doing now and like kudos to him he went he's always liked his edm music so like he went that route of just like rapping on like heavy bass like edm stuff and like bro like shit slaps like it's crazy but it, like he's like the look. He has his, his brand down. He's getting the streams. Like oh, keep yeah. pushing, you know. He, yeah, he 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 killed it this year for sure. So shout out to Justin Diamond for sure. For sure. Man. But uh, yeah, enough about my podcast. I and mean, we sidetracked your music. Now, like the videos you've released this year, well, the last year. two three years. Like what what's the most response you've gotten like what's the best one you've gotten a response for uh a lot of people like the one i did shark was like the uh, one of the first ones i did with 350 same with the storm one that i did off future chunks um the ones i did with fenty people say it's a little boudoir it's a little racy but i feel like i dressed those girls like i chose the outfits i told them what to wear and i feel like it was tasteful like it's revealing enough but it's like they're not and i told them like i don't want you to do anything that you're not comfortable doing like, I want you to be you in this video. I mean, you have to be my accomplices, you know? So you gotta, like, pretend to like me in the video a little bit. But if you watch the videos, I told you, yo, push me. Like, pretend like you hate my guts in this video. Like, I want you to have fun. Like, yeah. and you can ask any of them. Like, I try to make sure they're very comfortable. I make sure no one disrespects them. Like, yes, they're a woman. Yes, they're scandally nude. But you will respect them, you know? Like, they're just important. They're just as important to the music video as I am in there, you know? Because maybe you're not paying attention to me. You're looking at her because you think she's fly. But she's beautiful. You know what I mean? She she has a mind. She has a heart, you know? And to me, that's important in my music. And sometimes I feel like it gets lost in it. And it, it, it bothers me. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of ways where everyone can win. And it's, it's hard, you know? I hear you. You think, like, when you look at, like, the hip-hop scene overall in general, like, all over, not just Ottawa. Mm-hmm. Just all over for a second. Like, do you think artists look at the same lens that you're looking at of right now no okay i'm I mean, i'm very I considerate had, like yeah because like i don't think like the way you explained how like you have the girls on set and how like you let everything to me they're like family at this point i've worked with them so many times yeah like i i check in with them like are you okay is there, what's yeah. going on like forget about the music like i don't have a music video for you to be in like just seeing if you're good you need something you know what i mean like those are the type of relationships i want to have with everyone like with 350 like i try to check in i was messaging fenty earlier i was like bro i got some ideas let's link up but like let's just shoot the shit let's make sure you're okay you know yeah because i feel like like back to the mental health like sometimes it's hard you know yeah like we're all putting ourselves out there and like this is what our jobs and it's so easy for everyone else just to judge, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this sucks, or people just scroll. It's like, yo, I put my all into this. And, like, yeah. coming from where we come from, like, look how many people aren't doing it, you know? Sometimes it gets lonely, like, our mutual friends split. A lot of a lot of us stopped doing the same. Like, I started trait. at Lyrically Blessed, off Carling, you know what I mean? G Fresh, <laughs> E.S, Beats sure. A Million, yeah. uh, Bo Stacks, Castro came through a few times, I met briefly, you know? Like, these are all people... Some of them are still doing it. Fresh is doing photography, but like it hurts me. You know what I mean? I feel alone sometimes. Like like even like when Fresh Cardi did, told me like Fresh did my last professional hip hop photo shoot. You should like, <laughs> I seen Fresh at the airport and he gives me mad love. You know, Bro, I can see him across the street. Like I love Fresh. You know Yo, what I mean? He's, he's deadly with that. He gave me bro. my start. He was the first studio. You know what I mean? Yeah, and literally I, blessed. Wow. I, how could I? How did I let that name slip? I thought that I, I made it when I went to that studio and Fresh had all his CDs and I was recording in his room. I was like, "Yo, like I made it! Like I'm in high school, grade yeah. ten. Like I did it, you know? Yeah. I didn't do anything, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, mean, I missed that, those that days, was, bro. That, that was a good. That was a good squad back then. That was definitely. A, that was a tight. I wish we were still then. around. I wish we had that closeness. That you know yeah. what I mean? I saw I saw Bo Stacks like ten years ago, probably in Barhaven when I was with uh, Carde. Mm-hmm. And uh, a few other people at the time, but uh, and Mike I think was there too. Mike was usually with us. We were riding together. Like Mike was with us, even if we weren't making music together anymore. We were still 
we were still chilling. It wasn't like we hated each other. We just had differences. <laughs> you know? And, what's me mean? Like, uh, how many times did you go to the studio with these but guys? But he wasn't wrong. It's for a day for me and him, but he wasn't wrong. So I'll give, like, I'll give him that now because, like, I've had, like, obviously way too many fucking years to think about it. <laughs> you know, like, that's the thing with some, like, mental health, too. You could, like, block shit out for, like, decades and then, like, one day you're just doing some, like, random chore and just bloop! This thought, like, just pops into your head like a fucking text message on an iPhone and you're like, fuck, why did I think about that today? What the fuck made me think about that? I was washing the dishes. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it some just memories, triggered you. Yeah, you know? and you're yeah. like, what the fuck brought that on? Like, but, like, it's, that's, that's just like suppression like your head your head your head's crazy but we'll get more into that later but with your music you're telling a, a lot of the times you're telling the story what kind of story are you telling and it's always of, something based like usually my last couple of projects are usually like relationship based or just like what's going on like the last one i did manja more there's a bonus unreleased song called overdose and it's like literally just like this really dark time i'm like, the hook is like, I'm in a trap house bumping Nipsey, bagging up, moving quickly. I slump with no sympathy. I ain't slept with no intimacy. And that's real. Like, I used to go, to, I used to be in a trap house, and every time we go there, it was Nipsey playing on the fucking thing before he died. You know what I mean? So to Marathon me, that means... continues. That's what I mean. Like, that means something to me. And, like, I've played that song for, like, everyone I play that song for relates to it because, like, we all have a friend who does that. You know what I mean? You should have sent me that song. It's not released yet. You know I know, I mean? that's the point. I mean, we'll, we'll, I'll play it for you, bro. I'll play it for you, don't worry. But to me, that song means a lot, you know what I mean? It's a really... Per- I tried to be it so it's not so bait. Like, I'm not trying to air anyone out. But for me, that was like... Just don't make a video. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I, it, it, was a, it was a defining moment. Like, even, like, when my nephew was born, it really changed my perspective. Like, okay, hey, what am I doing? Like, okay, yeah, I can go do this and get corrupted and, like make some quick cash but like, who am I going to be to this person who am I going to be to my family you know mm-hmm. I need to stop this shit you know and I told you like, earlier like I'm on a tolerance break right now because yeah. I need to get my mind clear of like am I really anxious am I really overthinking and I find a lot of the reasons I would blame for marijuana is it's wrong like I still feel that way it was just me my way of avoiding things yeah. and I feel it's not that I'm going to stop I just took a little break because I love that shit yeah but... he's letting me smoke he's not he's not yeah. <laughs> He's being, you want to send me free? You want, you want to some free bags? I got, I got it. You know what I mean? But uh, Henley too. You know what I mean? No, definitely. No, I feel you on that. I, I just, man. Now that I'm at the point like I'm just smoking to feel normal nowadays. You know, like, that's I, the thing. You know, I felt like I'm not normal unless I do. But it's wrong. It's like I wasn't always like that. I didn't like how much power it had on me. The alcohol, anything. You know, like I, I don't like, really drink. Like last weekend, I was saying I drank there. Like. Mm-hmm. I, like that's the first time I finished a bottle of like a two six with somebody. Like I used to finish like forty pounders like back You know what I mean? Up, like for no reason. Like or I'd get a text of Mickey between me and Peeps. Like I don't know if you remember my boy Moses. Mm, possibly. Big, I remember every Big Man's. Big Man Oh, I think I met him once Honda. or twice. Okay, yeah. I think yeah. I saw him once. Yeah. Shout out to Peeps man. But um I'd buy a Texas Mickey of like Grey Goose for mm-hmm. a house party and split it between me and one other dude. Mind you at the this point, like, I was not, like, huge, like, you know, a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. Sorry, peeps, but you're a big dude, man. Like, <laughs> we were chugging that shit back, and that was, like, college. That's, like, 2010, 2011, but, like, before that, I was drinking with Mike and, like, everybody, like, when we were, like, 13, 14, like, just... But that's what you did when we yeah. were kids, you know what but, I mean? like, Some hood you know, shit. like, I thought I'd still be drinking to this day, but I just don't like it. I don't like who it makes me, you know what I mean? Last weekend was dope. I guess I guess it does really matter if it's like the environment you're in. I guess I like to drink now when it's like you're celebrating or you're with people. I don't you need know? to be drinking by myself. You yeah, know what I mean? once in a while, like you know, yeah, I just have a drink. Like something yeah, I had a long like, day. Let me pour something. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah. I don't need to go to the LCBO buy a thing at Appleton's and just yeah, exactly. drink it straight on the way home. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, Appleton's. <laughs> Back in, I blame Mike for that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely blame Mike for that. This one's gotten turned into a clip. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm tagging a minute <laughs> for sure but uh no yeah so like with so your last one was about like you said relationship issues your last project Mangia Morne which means Mangia Amore means eat love in Italian so I had a song called Liquor Store All My Jugs and Full Moon so the top of it is Liquor Store it's about this girl who always wants to go out always wants me to drink just always wants me to go out and I just it's not me you know what I mean I just hear her calling for it it's like I need to escape all my jugs where it's like now she's getting mad at me for wanting me to do this it's like yo you wanted to me this be this person you wanted me to be selfish and now I became this and now you're saying I'm vain for it and then Full Moon is like the culmination you know what I mean when a full moon happens it's like the end of it and it's like I'm done with this I found a 
new life. I found a new person and this is who I am. And that's how I wanted to end it. Originally, I wanted to have Overdose as like a bonus because it really, it's like, a, it's more harder. The other stuff, I find Majin Moore was more popish, more upbeat, but Overdose was some real raw shit. So maybe I, I might drop that one, but yeah. But like right now I'm having a hard time. Not a hard time, but I just don't know where I want to go creatively next. Yeah. I've been going through a lot of shit, but I just want it to be more, more relatable in a way where it's like, like I said, community. Like, I want to get, like, more involved with it in the scene, you know? Like, the way it was back in the day. Yeah. Like, like with, a beat, with a producer from Ottawa and the click is from Ottawa, you know? Like, I don't want to go get a producer from L.A. or fucking Belgium, you know? I've been working with producers from all around the world because it's easy now, YouTube and stuff. But I want to build something for the for the city because, you know what? Ottawa is really... It's upcoming. Everyone thinks you have to go to Toronto. But you don't anymore. You know what I mean? You have a computer. You have a mic. Tell them again so they hear you in the back. We, we don't need... Like, I don't need to hear Ottawa sounding like Toronto. I love Toronto sound. That's Toronto. Yeah. This is Ottawa. Ottawa has its own sound. We just need to appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Let Pressa sound like Pressa. Yeah. But let Ocean sound like Ocean. Like, like Castro's Castro. Castro mm-hmm. doesn't try to sound like any from Toronto. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we and we love like, Castro. And he doesn't even try to sound like he's from Pittsburgh. But like he just come. He, he, that's why he doesn't try to do it. He has his he own sway. Already sounds like you can tell. You know that there's a difference to him. Exactly, and that's you know? what I love. I love. I think all the auto artists are just themselves. That's but another dope squad, man. Triple B, man. Best of both borders. I was. Oh man, that was such a good name, <laughs> man. He used to do one, uh, was it, Sea Squeezy, up. Parliament something? Uh, yeah, I forget. Man, there's so much. Those days were fun. One of my favorite tracks, actually, from you when you were, when you were Mike Runner Group from BNA was the Light Up Freestyle from uh, Drake. I don't uh, know if you remember that one. That was I, one of my... That, I had that shit I on wish my I phone. Sh- I wish I still had that track. I had that somewhere, I'm pretty sure. If you can find any of our... I will send it if to you, you can find bro. any of our... I was low-key bumping your shit with that one, bro. Bro, no if lie. you can find any of our old songs like that, like, any of them, like... <laughs> but I still remember it, bro. I remember boom, the beat coming yeah. in, you know what I mean? We did a lot of like cutting out the beat and shit too. Like we had a lot of fun with like. But you guys had a really beat. good energy too. You know, you guys were Bro, really. Ca- you guys are flipping fa- songs fast, and I could Bro, write them. You know, we were doing mixtapes like a week. Like we were just putting them up on Sound. Like yeah. not SoundCloud. Sorry, SoundCloud. Uh, <laughs> there we, was no SoundCloud. Yeah, MySpace. We were yeah. putting them up on MySpace and Dat Piff, like mm-hmm. sh- and like shit like that. Like, but like they were just. They weren't like tracks that like we were trying to like make singles, what we called singles then by no means. Back then single meant like a song that was your main song and then you had your smash hit. And, you yeah. know what I mean? Now singles like every time someone drops something it's a single. And then they drop a project but like you've heard like eight singles from it and you're like, I'm so fucking confused. Yeah, but we came up in like the Diplomats era was all mixtapes jumping on shit, don't you know? Get me started on the Diplomats, man. I'll be we'll be here for a long time. But bro. that was that our was, like, era. Our influence. That you know what I mean? Like bro, the like, G unit tapes. When like, I saw all that Cameron shit. in 2020 at that at uh, uh Barrymore's, man. Was that uh, I wanted bro, to go to that. Bro, was he was he a good performer? Bro, he 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 Cameron would do anything he wants on stage, man, and it doesn't matter, bro. Listen to how he says some of his rhyme schemes like yeah. bananas and shit like <laughs> bro, like he was crazy. Like Performing, he was dope, he was, and he, he didn't, like, bring any special guests. I wish he would have, but uh, he did, like, it all solo. Like, he had, a, like, a hype man, but, like, the hype man wasn't even really, like, heard. Like, camera, like, held it down. It was a dope show. But, yeah, like, oh, Diplomats, man. Fuck. Even the uh, moon music, bro. Like, I remember you yeah. were a Big Joe Budden fan, too. Oh, oh, that's, like, my favorite artist. Same. And when bro. he did the podcast, I was like, yo, this is my man. So yeah, like, like... He's still talking that shit that I need. Yeah, he's gotten a little weird. But, I mean, he's older. He did. Yeah, he's finding... Him. He's still finding himself, which I can appreciate. But he was one of the reasons, and I'm sure for you, like, to really start making music and really putting your life into it. That's you know? why I stopped rap, like, that G'd up shit and changed the handling and started writing more, like, conscious rap. At the time, that's what Button would have been considered. Yeah. And, like, now Kendrick Lamar is Consider conscious rap. That's crazy to me. I, I don't know. I think Kendrick Lamar is l- lyrical rap, and mm-hmm. like Joe Budden is still conscious rap because like Joe's like, Joe is pulling shit out of his conscience. Like, but all of these new rappers were getting very personal. Like Joe is doing that way back. That's what I'm trying to say. But people don't want to listen to me, <laughs> man. Like people they like, oh, he's he's they tired. He complains. Bro, he's a hater. Like, oh, pump it up, like, yo! You better shut the fuck up, man. That he didn't even like making that song. He didn't want to make that song. He needs he the made, check. He you made, know what I mean? No, but no, Jay needed the check, not him. 
He didn't want to do it. That's why him and Jay had beef. Oh, I thought it was because Jay wanted to jump on it or some shit. Probably that too. Jay's selfish, man. After you, after years of watching, he's a selfish motherfucker. But it's the industry, and you know, like. But you have to be, you, you know? know. I love Jay. Don't get me wrong. Of course, but he's a businessman. Savage is a savage does. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's the industry we in. Yeah, man. like look at look at Rock Nation now. Like you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Look at Rockefeller and look at Rock Nation. You yeah. know, complete different. Yeah, crazy. We're getting to like whole crazy backstory. So like hip hop artists, but this is like, our history though. Yeah, so like, to me, it's not like a backstory. People are gonna like this. It's gonna be a good episode. Okay, so the last one was Andre Moore. Andre Moore. I, I just don't want to butcher the name. No, that's why okay. I make you say it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people had a hard time with it. That's why. Yeah. I was like, oh, so okay. like you had that, and then before that, what was it? Was uh, little, 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 little Italy. Little Italy. Yeah. And what visuals could work out of that? One? So like the last few projects, say like the last name, the last three projects, like well, in like last chronological, year. and then say the visuals that came with them. Okay. So like people have an idea. Like so, the beginning of twenty twenty one, I said every month I would release at least one single with the idea of doing a music video every month. Within three months, I was like, yo, I'm I'm below my budget, like. Yeah. I can't get my songs mixed. So the first one I did was Rims, which was like the one we'll, the one that we'll, we'll play for you guys today for sure. But that one was like I got split on there and it's like check out my rims, you know? Yeah. I was really motivated top of the year. The second one was Trunking Out, which was like uh, a sequel to a, a mixtape I did in 2020 called Future Trunks. I tried to do something with a theme, you know? I dyed yeah. my hair blue. I just I didn't want to be me, you know? I was on some crazy shit. I gotta have a bad relationship. That's usually like my pivotal point. Like once I get cozy with something and then like I lose everything, it's like, okay, music. Like music saves my life. Man, Keeps what me is focused. it with us like guys from back in the day who are like hard ass motherfuckers that are always like the like most sensitive relationships. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm, I swear. We I'm just love the toxicity. Front. I don't know, man. Bro, I know, man. It's like so a sweet bad. girl will like you, right? And you're like, I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> You call her, she picks up. You're like, yo, where are you at? She tells you. I'm like, yo, this sucks. The next one, yo, baby, where are you at? Like, ooh, I like this. Like, Mike, ooh, I like this. Like, <laughs> you don't talk that yeah, shit. Like, yeah. But I think yeah. in my age, I've learned that, like, those girls are just going to take your money, waste your time, step on your heart. You write some good music with it, but it's how long can I do that until mentally it just breaks me, you know? I hear you. No, that's, no, that's true, man. It is that toxic shit, man. I'm telling you, like, but it's just being young and dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I still have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> man, like I've been single for so long. Like I'm just starting to get comfortable now. Like, hey, <laughs> you want to kick it? All right. <laughs> but, but that's the thing I've learned is that you have to be comfortable by yourself. And it took me a long time to just be like, you know what? I don't need to see no one. Yeah, but bro, if you get too comfortable, like being alone, like not being alone but you have to be comfortable you have to be a, it's okay that like i don't have a girl right now yeah and for a long time i always felt like oh, i'm lacking like i don't have mad stories blowing up my phone i always yeah. felt like they're like i'm doing something wrong or why don't i want this yeah. or i always felt like i need to be like it's the age we live you need to be stimulated always but like when's the last time you just sat in silence i've been trying to do that like turn my phone off i'm not even listening to music when i go to work i'm in my car fucking quiet bro yeah and at first i was like yo this sucks like i'm so fucking bored but that's when you really think. Like that's when you really. You're. That's why I stopped smoking. It's like now I have to confront this. I have to figure this shit out. And I, I've only been doing it for the past couple of weeks. And I've I've learned so much about myself in such a small amount of time that I feel like I'm gonna do this every year at the beginning of the year to like see what I want to do for the rest. And I encourage anyone to do it. Like it'll change your life, honestly, bro. I've had I've had a few people tell me the same thing. So like you're not alone on that one. But it's hard, bro. Like, and people oh, bro, would I, trust me. I would have such a hard time. A lot of my right friends now. are like, "Oh, you're not smoking." Like, they'll just like, oh, "We don't need to chill." Like, bro, I just got off my like, like the podcast knows. That's another thing about the podcast is like they know about like my diagnosis was like mental illness and like I had an addiction I was dealing with while I was starting out the podcast. So like, that's a whole other story. That's for like <laughs> after this. This after this. I'll talk about that, but like I was like popping Zannies like candy, like. Mm. But like that's out, that's gone now. So like we're good on there. The boy's healthy. Trust me, I'm yeah. looking at it right now. The boy's good. Yeah, I still smoke my weed. Like I, it's a plant, not a drug. It's good. It's legal though. Yeah, that too. But it's still a plant. It's, you know, like it's not synthetic. It's not. It's not made in. Well, some of it's made. Yeah. Of, but like you know what I mean. <laughs> For the most part, like, you know what I mean. Like if I was in Jamaica, I'd be pulling it off. And just smoke With some brava in it, yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yo, speaking of that, shout out to Circuit Beats, who was on the show on episode uh, 9. I smoked some of that in the split with them. 
the other Circle, day. Circle, man. That's what yeah. OG2 from there could play. I was just going to say, you want to, like, connect with, like, the scene still? Like, Circle still that connect. He's still, so, like, right, like, neck deep. I know. I still, he still does DJs. I need to, I need to make it my mission to reconnect with yeah. those people. Yeah, man, she just got a house and shit. Oh, yeah? Hope you definitely mind me saying that. Man, yeah. shout out Circle, man. Yeah, definitely, man. I remember being inspired watching this guy making beats. Bro, in fucking he's, Sam's he's room like, or some shit. He's like shit. the A-Rap music of, like, Ottawa, yeah. bro. Like, of Canada, man, if that. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't seen fingers like him, like, man. Huh. Yeah, and he has a nickname, Fingers. It's, I think it was Fingers, or Super Fingers. Super I, fingers. I think it was Super Fingers, but mm. that's even better. But Ladies, like, you listening? He's called Super Fingers. <laughs> bro. Yo, sir, if you get some pussy, bro, it's on me, get bro. me canceled, man. <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna be the most artistic motherfucker on here and then get me canceled? How the hell does that work? You won't get canceled. I've bro. had, I've had. You have no sponsors. How are they gonna cancel you, bro? I have sponsors. They're gonna cancel you for that? No. Because <laughs> my sponsors so. are out of Alberta. <laughs> they go. don't do shit the same. <laughs> Shut off the West Coast. <laughs> Word. <laughs> no. That's jokes. But uh, so back because we didn't finish the visual question because we keep getting bearded off with shit. That's why I try, like, not to have, like, people, like, I really, really, really knew back in the day. Not to say that I didn't really know you back in the day because we, we talked frequently a lot because, like, we go back and forth and shit. Dude, you, you introduced me to fucking Carter, who, who was my engineer for Did fucking... Did I introduce you? I didn't know that. I mean, you would, like, whenever I was with Mike and he was, if I was with Mike and he was with you, you would have Adam. Oh, So course, for me, yeah. my head, the only way I would met them is through you, bro. So yeah. I owe that to you 100%. Well, shout out Carter, bro. Yeah, man. Shout out Cardi for this one. Yeah. I miss you, bro. (laughs) I miss him too, man. I haven't seen him. Uh, I saw him a few years. Like, maybe like four years ago, I think. Before COVID hit, I know that. Mm. But yeah, so we got a coffee. So the visuals that you dropped, like, which ones do you... uh, Trunkin' Out is my favorite. It's a movie. Yeah. I direct. That was like my first thing. Okay, like how do I make a music video into a movie? Were you solo now? I'm liking that one too. Uh, It starts off uh, within a Benz and like a girl is pointing a gun at me. I'm in a bed, and it's pretty much, if you watch the shark video, I'm in, like, a, an asylum, you know? It's kind of Joker-inspired, and she's a nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse, and she helps me break out. So the next video is trunking out, or the sequel to that. So now I'm free. I'm on my way to the safe house. She wakes me up because she finds out I'm cheating. And she's, she, she drives up with my boys, so Mike and my next boy is in there, too. And they drive up, and they're waiting in the car for me. Meanwhile, she's beating the fuck out of me. So the next time you see me, I got a black eye, mm-hmm. I got blood. And then we're just cruising around the city, bumping, trunking out. You know what I mean? Riding through the city, trunking out. Mm-hmm. Just, like, I want to do something, like, hyper, you know? I wanted... I mean, that, back in the day, I was rocking, like, a bandana and shit, just trying to do some street shit that just wasn't me, you know? So I was like, yo, let me do some shit that I care about. Dragon Ball Z, you know what I mean? Let me be Trunks. Trunks was really the inspiration because, like, if you know the story of the, of the comic book or, like, the anime, I guess you want to say, he goes back to a... He, he's from the future and he comes back to save himself, you know? So I feel like I went through all this shit and now I know better. So let me go back and fix things. So, like, that's why I'm future Trunks, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's dope. I mean, it's kind of crazy, it's kind of kooky, but, I mean, if you know the story and you know those and you put it together, it's it's really some dope shit, man. Yeah. I really put a lot of thinking behind it. I feel like that no, was really slept on. It behind. seems like that. I like the plotting, like, the whole, like... I mean, I literally changed my physical appearance to become this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. people look at me crazy. Like, my family was like, yo, you pierced your nose, you dyed your hair blue, like, you're rocking this bandana everywhere, like, what are you doing? You're rocking a vest. <laughs> well, what were your parents saying? My, I just, I just said my, my mom. My mom was like, "What are you doing? Like, what, what, what is this inspired by?" And I'm like, "Yo, it's just art." After the sequence of those two videos, mm-hmm. what did you start dropping after that? Oh, uh, I did Freak with uh, Fenty Films for the first time, and I had uh, Frozen Neptune and Roxy. Yeah, I, I, that's who I saw Frozen Neptune through. Oh yeah. Initially, yeah. Yeah, and that song too, freak is like Dragon Ball. You know, I hit a, I hit her body like a spirit bomb. Send me a line, I send her a beam. You know, I'm talking about doing drugs with girls, but I'm just hiding it behind whatever. You know. Yeah. But like, that was really fun. Like that really showed me that like I can make something, be creative, be a little scandalous. I mean, I rented a, a Mercedes Benz just for the show. I didn't drive it. I let all my friends. I rented that that car for the video. I didn't even drive it. I invited all my friends to the shoot so they could drive it around the block. I was. Yeah. Too busy organizing, feeding everyone, making sure everything goes smooth, you know? Yeah. I was a, I was the actor, I was the rapper, I was the director, I was I was catering, you know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone's like, yo, I've never been to a music video shoot where the rapper cares this much. But it's just like, yo, like, all you guys are my family. Like, I'm trying to do this for everyone. Like, it's not about me being behind the camera. Like, yeah. the last one I did, Mancha Moore, the live show, I got so many people involved and I loved it. They're like, yo, this is crazy, bro. Like, I bought food for everyone, you know what I mean? I got free merch for everyone. Like, that's what I want to do. Like, I want to take care of the community. Get something back. Because I told you, man, like, music saved my life. I would not be in this chair if it was not for music. Right. And I haven't been making music in the past three months. 
and the shit makes me sad, bro. Like, yeah. I have all these emotions and stories, and I just have to like sit to have fun engineer, and I can just unload. We're gonna get into the mental health stuff, but first, uh, you want to introduce that first track they're gonna listen to. So right now, we're gonna listen off uh, one of the tracks on my latest project, Manja Mori, and it's called All My Drugs. Watch this. Watch this. She said I'm crazy. She said I'm in it. Why is it on my phone? You say I'm crazy. You say I'm jaded. But why is it on my phone? You take all my love. You take it all. You take it all. Like I'm touching weed I'm in the ribs like I'm throwing seeds <laughs> I eat a coochie like lobster tail I make a movie like mouse tails Her body moving like a lot of shells Catch on little Italy Little did they know she been into me Italy, really Catch me on champagne Cuts on insane Oh, she chill like champagne But she only sipping Prosecco You ain't talking that level I bring in that money That margin I'm all day Get a loop on, stupid oh, holla at the You say I'm crazy, you say I'm jaded It's all my fault, you take all my love You say I'm crazy, you say I'm jaded But you want all my drugs, you say it's all my fault Right, back from the track with Ocean, we're gonna get into the mental health conversation. So start off with you were speaking about it before, like you you said you just recently started like finding out about like the anxiety you deal with. Did you always have like an idea there is for when I was especially when I first started doing music, like it was really hard when I'd show up to like a studio session, like They'd be like, okay, we're gonna go to the studio, we're gonna write, and I'd be like panicking, you know what I mean? Like, how do I wanna do this? I'd be overthinking, like, they're gonna judge me. So I'd always try to like have something pre written, you know what I mean? And it wasn't until I started recording actually with Shanks. Like Shanks, I don't know if you guys know who Shanks Daddy is, but uh, he literally had the booth, like, it, was, it was like a microphone, and he was right beside you. I was like, fuck, like, not only do I have to write in front of this guy, I gotta rap and sing and everything. But I owe him a lot because he really made me feel comfortable. Like, that's when I really started to start singing and, like, crazy ideas, too. I was like, bro, what if I just start making, like, monkey noises or, like, acting like a journalist or whatever, you know? But I realized as I come, like, as I got older, like, a lot of things I was putting in my body, like, I used to smoke a little bit of cigarettes every once in a while. And that should make me feel anxious. But I had too much coffee. It's just, like, more like a self-esteem, you know? It's really all in my head. And recently from this break, I realized... I used to be like, oh, I'm just paranoid. I'm just overthinking because I'm high, you know? It's the weed, it's the weed, it's not me. It's not, it's just the way I'm thinking, you know? So now that I have a clearer head, it's just like, I'm not overthinking. I'm just, I'm doubting myself for no reason. You know what I mean? Like I play a song and I don't get the uh, the reception that I imagined in my mind. 
So now I'm overthinking like, oh, the beat sucks. They don't like the way I'm saying it. But then later on, I'm like, yo, bro, that's like one of my favorite songs by you. But like in the moment, it feels like the end of the world. Like I fucked up, like I'm the worst, you know what I mean? But the battle really just, I found the battle just starts in my own mind. I just need to shut the fuck up sometimes, you know? Yeah. Sometimes the first idea in your head, like your intuition is right. And it's usually like the people around you. And if there are, if they, like, there has been relationships too where it's like, man, I really like this girl, but why do I like this girl? Because she's toxic, because she's beautiful, whatever. But every time I go see her, I feel anxious. I feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? But now I surround myself with positive people and I don't feel that way. I feel confident. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm not worried about what I'm wearing, what I'm saying, how I look. Like, who gives a fuck? I, I don't think about it when I walk down the street. Like, it's a mental thing. Like, why do I feel like when I go outside, everyone's looking at me and judging me? No one gives a fuck. Like, that's what I've learned. You know what I mean? Like, everyone has their own demons and their own problems. No one cares what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. Even when I post on social media in the beginning, I was very... Oh, what do I say? Like, all oh, that picture. Like, you know, no one cares. Like, people are just going to keep scrolling, yeah, you know? Social media plays a big part in that, like, anxiety shit these days. And it made it a lot worse. So now I try to yeah, keep it I keep it at bay. Especially if you already have it, like, and, like, you're, like, diagnosed with it. Like, if you're diagnosed with it. Some people just know what it is. But, yeah. like, the social media could just, like, add on to it, like, in a whole other layer. Like, it just, it gets overbearing sometimes like social media i find and the thing is like you harbor it in your body too you know what i mean you you stay quiet you don't really say anything one day you just you have a panic attack you explode or something you know and yeah I, I, I was like i don't want to feel like that anymore you know yeah and with like the past relationships like that you have a lot of your music that you say were based off of and stuff did you find that you had a lot of mental health like issues going through easily that, like after i had no like, self-esteem i was seeing myself it's like how can i like is this during the relationships or after them Dur during the relationships you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's just like how can i bring myself and meet someone halfway when i don't feel full myself you know what i mean it's like i need to figure out who i am and like understand that like it's okay i don't have everything figured out you know like i'm in a we're both in a different age in our lives than we were making music so when we get to where we are in our lives, you feel like you should have this and that. But says who? To, who? to what standards am I holding myself to? You know what I mean? Who am I trying to impress? Like, who am I trying to express I'm trying to live up to? I know my mom loves me. Mom doesn't give a fuck what I do. As long as I'm happy and I'm working and I have a roof over, she'll be happy. As long as my friends will hear from me every once in a while, will connect. They don't care how I'm dressing. They don't care the shoes I'm having. You know what I mean? As long as I'm healthy and I'm happy, that's what matters, bro. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm happy to see you're doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what it looks like, who you're interviewing. As long as you have the interview. Like I told you when we were talking yesterday, it's not the destination or success. It doesn't matter if my song hits a thousand views or a million views. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I make a song, I like it and I'm happy with it. And someone says, yo, listening to this really helped me. That's it. Yeah. I did my job. You know what I mean? I don't have to overthink anything else. Yeah. And I used to blame it on the weed. It's like, oh, it's the weed doing it. It's like, no, it was me doing it. So now when, I hope when I start smoking again, I can just enjoy that shit. You know what I mean? I had a long day. Fucking light that shit up, bro. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. That's what I hated. I would get high. I'd be so excited and it would just ruin it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make me feel anxious. I don't want to do that. I want to get high and enjoy that shit. Yeah, no, I hear you. If you want to put in, you know what I mean? I want to eat that shit. <laughs> oh, the carbs, the cheese. The like, shit, fuck. That shit got Canadian real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, sponsor. <laughs> For real, smokes. What's up? Yo. <laughs> no, but, uh, like, with the relationships, like, after them, like, like, where you, like, growing up, I don't know, like, when you were growing up, how romantic, like, you were. Oh, dude, people. I was like, a simp when I was younger. Like, <laughs> straight up. Like, baby, whatever you want, I'll be there. I got you. What are you doing? So was I. That's why I had to change my name and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, then, they, then you start becoming someone, like, they'll meet you. Like, say a girl meets you right now, and she likes you for who you are. But then you start learning more about this girl, right? So then you start slowly changing yourself to what you think she wants and then she breaks up with you and you're crushed. You're like, yo, I did everything she wanted and now she wanted to leave. It's because you stopped being who you were and you start becoming someone else. And I find in a lot of my relationships, I thought I had to be this, whoever, whoever I was with, I, it made me feel like I had to be this person. Every time I would show up and I wasn't that, I'd feel like shit, you know what I mean? And this is someone that's supposed to make you feel better, you know? Yeah. Like you don't want to be in a codependent relationship where like however she views me is how I'm going to feel that day. That shit would fuck me up, bro. And then I'd be smoking with her, and I'd just be like, fuck, I feel miserable. You know what I mean? Like, I should be with my shorty having a fucking ball, getting high and drinking, but I'm not. What would some of them be, like, causing you? Like, what kind of, like, issues? It'd be like, yo, uh, like, with the music shit. Like, yo, why aren't you going to the club and, like, balling out like this guy? You know what I mean? It was always, like, a comparison. And then it, you hear that, like, once a week, every time you meet this, it's like, yo, maybe I should be doing that. Yeah. But then when you start doing that, it's like, yo, what the fuck, like... Now I don't see you. And then you're like, okay, let me go back. 
It's like, yo, either way I lose. Either I'm a loser for not going or I'm an asshole for going out. Yeah. So what I want, I just do what I want to do. This way I know I'm happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the girl I'm with now, I told her straight up, like, be with me or don't be with me. But like, this is what I'm doing. Music comes first. Yeah. You don't like my music? Don't be with me. I'm, I'm, I told her, yo, I'm happy being by myself. I don't need pussy. I don't need nothing. Mm. I'm fully content going to work, coming home, saving my money. You want to go out clubbing every night? You go do that and you go find a sucker to go do that. I'm not about that life. I don't go to the club unless I know the DJ. That's where point of my life is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if I'm doing, if I'm getting paid, doing a show, know somebody, 100% I'll be there. I, I know it's COVID. You can't really go. I don't need to hit the bar Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Who am I trying to impress? Yeah. These people don't give a fuck about me. They want my cigarette when, when they're drinking. They want me to buy them a drink. They want me to get them into VIP. You know what I mean? Like they want me to get them on stage, talk to the DJ. These people aren't your friends. Yeah. So I feel like, fuck that. Like, I don't need that life. Like... I can't live for anyone else because at the end of the day, it made, that shit made me feel hollow. It made me broke, out of shape, sick, you know what I mean? Like, it's not worth it. Yeah. For some pussy? Like, nah, man. Like, a lot of, like, the relationships, like, you found, like, most of them, like, have had, like, the similar talks of Trace or... Different. Like, one girl I was with for a long time and, like, it didn't work out because she didn't like that I was into music. So I was like, alright, fuck that. I'm gonna go all the way into music, and I found a shorty who was all the way into music. But then that wasn't that wasn't healthy either, you know what I mean? Because then she wanted to be this drug dealer that was like doing all this fucked up shit. So yo, you need to be doing more. So then I started doing that shit, and then like the people who actually care about me is like, yo, you look like a zombie. Like what happened to you? I'd be like meeting up with my family. I'd be drunk as fuck at the table. You know what I mean? Like my face, I'd be falling asleep at the table. Like yo, who am I becoming? Like this is not me. Like. Yeah. Isn't that what everyone knows? I didn't feel like I felt like so, so far from who I was. You know, I try to remember like who was I as a kid? Like who was I when I was like ten? It just wasn't me anymore. And then like I'm, I'm trying to deal with that and do music. Like I just felt like I was tearing at both ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure you can relate to that. Like oh no, like I said with my own like past addiction, like same thing with me. Like seeing myself like and then I tried to escape. You know, what not I mean? saying I, that yours was an addiction, but mine was like. But I, I might mean, have been addicted to like the toxic area, but like not like substances. You might have just been having like I, I dabbled. Like, I dabbled because yeah. I wanted to escape. Yeah, dabbling and an addiction are different. No, right? no, 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 no <laughs> definitely not. But but I knew it. Like once I did it, I was like, oh, like this is dangerous. Like I have addictive. Like once I like something, I go all the way. You know. That's the thing with me too. So you know? I caught myself. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And it's usually like someone who introduces it to you in a really like coy way. You know. Yeah. They're sneaky. You know what I mean. They're like, "Yo, come out. It'll be a good time." Oh, you never done this. You have a blast. You have a blast. Now you think every time you're with this person is gonna feel the same. So you keep doing it. Then you start talking to this person, but you still have this. You're like, "Well, I don't need them anyways. I'm gonna keep doing this." So I kept doing that, bro. Wasn't sleeping. I felt like shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was living on my own in my place, and I was like, "Yo." If I don't change my life right now, I'm going to kill myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had to just, like, stop everything. And I'm glad I, I changed my life, like, that, that time, you know? So when do you think, like, the downward spiral, like, let's just call it, like, stopped, like, officially? Or, like, that you got a, a clench of it? Uh, It wasn't, I feel like it was people just exiting from me, removing themselves from me, is when I really started, like, yo, something needs to change, because this is not how I remember people being around me, you know what I mean? Like... I'm not used to people just being like separating themselves. It's like, what am I doing? It's because I'm not me anymore, you know? Yeah. And then all my friends were not my friends because they only wanted me because they can come to my spot and do this. Or I would take them to there. Or I knew our, I can give them something for a really good deal. So everyone's my friend at 12 o'clock at night on a Saturday night, you know? Mm-hmm. Yo, Ocean, what's going on, bro? I haven't seen you. You want to hook up? Let's do this. Yeah. And then once you stop doing that, phone's dry. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm a piece of shit because now no one wants to fuck with me. But that wasn't my identity, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was just a service for people. And I'm not a service for someone. I'm a human being, you know what I mean? I have thoughts and feelings. I'm more than just a zippy to you. And that's when I stopped. I was like, yo, fuck this. I don't care how much money you're going to give me. It's not worth it, bro. No, definitely. And it's good that you got hold of that for sure. So like, I mean, sometimes I think about like, yo, the money I could have in the car I could be driving right now, you know what oh, I mean? Man. The Any- music videos I could be doing. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Anybody. And I just had to humble myself. Like, yeah. Fuck it. Like, I'll be the... Regular Joe for a bit if I have to. Yeah, you know? like, time tells all. I mean, like, if I die, then at least I die me, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, like, I'll hate to say it, but it's a lot more that people have going for them. Like, if they don't stop being who they're trying to be. That's why I say, yo, if I die tomorrow, I'm not even dying for me. I'm dying for someone else. Yeah. 
dude, exactly. and that shit fucked me up, you know? Mm-hmm. A different perspective to look at it. Well, think about it. Hard. Say you died for doing some other shit, and whatever, how you, wherever you believe the afterlife, now that you're that person. That's how I felt like, yo, if I die, I'm going to be this person for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, like, that's not even me. That's a good way to look at it. But I was doing all these things to impress all these people who don't give a fuck about me. I was doing this to impress a girl so she would stay with me. So this this guy would be my friend. So this guy would bring me here, you know what I mean? Yeah, after like all those relationships and like they exited your life, have you bumped into any of them since then? Like, No, I don't let them no. close to me no more. Man. Yeah, so you just, you don't even give the energy out of it. I like I don't know who That they invitation are. energy, not giving up very Can't likely. find me, bro. I'm a ghost right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are like, yo, you're a ghost. I was like, yeah. Bro, I only made my Facebook again back in like 2017 because someone literally made a Facebook post asking if I was alive. And I was like, well. But sometimes you I need to go so away. I gotta make you know? an appearance and be like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least they care you know what I mean they're wondering where you're at yeah and I'm still working on there's still a lot of people I want to reconnect with but in time you know I'm yeah. still working on me right now yeah so, like right now I'm glad that we have a new relationship now we have a different bond now when I see you again yeah exactly. it's different you know what I mean it's not like oh can I say hi like is it gonna be awkward it's no, like, I'll hit oh. you in a couple of weeks when you have your dry spell that's what I mean like now it's the homie <laughs> now I can come here and smoke and chill you know what I mean like it's not like oh fuck is that Henley like should I no Fuck yeah, that, bro. Just come through. It's the studio, bro. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but uh, what's different with like the the new relationship compared to the old relationships that were causing so much like stress on your like? There's nothing that it, there's nothing that's attached. It's like I'm willing to do all this for you. What are you willing to do for me? I'll meet you halfway. If you're not willing to meet me halfway, that's cool. I'll clean my hands. Whereas before, it's like, baby, please don't leave me. Yeah. It was always like, please don't leave. I need you. I don't need anyone. I need me. Yeah. That's why it took me a long time to learn. I don't need anyone. I just need myself. Not to be like egotistical or selfish or anything, but no, it, there's a different way. Like you, you, there's different whole different ways that you could have worded it. And like my you, last post on Instagram, I was like, yeah, everyone thinks I'm vain. I just take photos of myself. You know what I mean? But it's not about that. It's just like I am my brand. I have to show my face. Unfortunately. Yeah. But. I have to be selfish this year. I have to take care of me. I feel like I'm always, like I said, for music videos, I'm very considered, like, how's she feeling? How's she doing? I don't have the mental energy to do that. Like, it's exhausting. Yeah. The other day, I was just hanging out with someone for a full weekend. And by the end of it, I was, like, tired. I was like, yo, why am I so tired? I didn't do anything. And my mom was like, yo, you've been entertaining someone. Like, that's physically draining. Like, you're mentally thinking of yourself plus another being. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine one day having, like, a wife and a kid because that's, like, Two other people I have to think of and consider on top of like all my shit. Like, imagine me having a bad day yeah. and I have to shut that off because I know when I come home, my baby has to change the diapers. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have to like make sure the bills are paid. I need to, I'm, I'm learning to be more, I guess, an adult. <laughs> yes. I can't be a young street kid no more. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? no. We're still all learning, bro. I think I don't think we stopped learning, man. I th- I've come to understand that, I think. That's what I mean. At like one point, it feels like, like you forever, know everything. Like, it's for like, yeah, exactly. And then you know nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, That's why I feel now like weird, I don't know shit. It's like it goes like it reverses on you. It's that Benjamin Button shit. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Like yo, it's I like wish I could go back. Grown men turning into a baby. Yeah, fuck. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can be 16 with this mind, yo, I, the bro. world would be mine. Bro. Oh man, <laughs> I'm telling you that, <laughs> bro. 16 right now with this mind with TikTok, all this bullshit. Yo, game over, bro. Yeah, man. We thought like it was crazy when we had like the computers and shit. With a MySpace, we thought like, yo MSN and shit. We thought we were fucking lit. Freestyle battles. You ever do that shit, bro? Porn MSN? emojis and shit. Like, <laughs> or no emoticon. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Change emoticon, going home. Man. Change your MSN status to your favorite. Like who decided like it? It's not emoticons anymore. It's emoji. Like who the fuck gets to decide that? Like that's some bullshit. Mm. Fucking Apple. Uh, but <laughs> no, like, it's true though. Like it, it's like the older you get, like. The more you're learning than when you were younger, you thought like it was just everything was easy going. Like it was all like it was pressure. I feel like I couldn't make mistakes when I was younger. Yeah. But that's when you're supposed and to. Like make in high mistakes. school, they're like telling you this shit too. They're like, you're gonna see. They're like, don't worry about it. Just wait. And they're like, you're like looking at the teacher like, fuck this punk. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you're just like, don't. And they're all like, they're just tired of like dealing with the shit. So they're like, because they see the same shit like, every so year. Like, all right, just yeah. watch. They're like, all right, bet watch. And then like you get out of high school and you're like think of that teacher and you're like. Man, punch that mother. <laughs> what high school did you go to? Uh, Pearson. Lester Pearson. Yeah. Lester Pearson. Okay, okay. 
You went to Pius, right? Yeah. yeah for some reason, that. I thought you went to Maryville for a little bit. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, bro. I was in the East all the time, man. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I was, <laughs> Maybe Maryville. I just saw you chilling around there. I don't know. I feel like I, I was saw always, you. Yeah. I was everywhere, man. That's, just like, that's why I was so, like, well-connected in, like, the hip-hop scene, like, what you I know was. You a lot of people, Because man. I was in the East, West, South, and, like, everyone had, like, like, now everybody had their groups, but, like, I don't know. I feel like once you were welcomed in, like, a group, Back then, like, it was, like, solidified, like, even People if, knew. like, you, like, don't talk for a while, like, if you come back, like, the respect's still there. Mm. Nice, as long nice. as you didn't do no bullshit or nothing dirty, like you know what I mean. Like, yeah, there's some people that there's just no like turning back for them. Like, it's you've done what you've done. Like you said, like there's people that like you just let exit out your life. You won't let back in. Like, there's some people like that with me too. Like, I appreciate like, no, the experience, but yeah, exactly. Make like, exit life. Thanks for the lesson. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, You're your lesson. I learned it. I don't need to talk no more to you. I'd right? rather crash into this wall and I veer off than like keep going on this like same lane with you right now. So like you know like. <laughs> Exactly, bro. If I'd rather risk death than to be with you, it's <laughs> you know, like it speaks volumes. It's, it's my choice, you know yeah, what I mean? You know? I'm in control of the yeah. car. That's how I feel. But yeah, so like with anxiety and all the like toxic stuff, like did you deal with a lot of depression and stuff? Like I Easy, think I asked bro. that. But I think I asked that, but we got there's a there's, there's a song I have called Possessed. And I was just in a really dark space, and like the chorus is, I feel depressed up in my head like a book. I feel possessed. <laughs> Because, like, when I feel like I'm depressed, I'm not me. And I just, I realize, like, yo, something is just taking a hold of me. It's making choices. It's making me distant. It's killing my appetite. You know what I mean? I'm making, doing all these things, but yeah, it's man, not. That depression does some fucked up shit. You don't think, people are like, oh, it's just people, like, being sad and, like, crying. Yo, it's, it's, it's more than just being sad, though. People don't understand. It's so much more deeper than being sad. Like, you could have a, a beautiful I day. I bed, like, for, like three days straight and like you lose track of time bro it's crazy like people think being in isolation is bad like yo try and be like chronically depressed or like bipolar who just like for myself who just deals with chronic lows like yep don't talk about like just this it's all crying like yo i haven't had like you cry in a minute like you know like <laughs> sometimes you but i've been cry, depressed bro. i've been depressed like consistently for like as long as I can like count people will be like oh he's happy he's smiling you can't be that bad it's no, fake yo, man. don't say that shit yeah. no not even it's not fake at all man people don't understand like you can have a, no, a great day I'm not day. correcting you as in like you're wrong no, I'm just yeah. saying like like yeah. yo like some of the like saddest people are comedians like you like come on like you know what I mean like yeah. for example I shouldn't have to name anybody like Robin Williams like so like with the depression like did you like deal with like how do you deal with it but like what was going through your mind so for me to like cope with like my depression you know i i like i said like i'd be considered of other people because i was trying to hide the way i was feeling you know so if i was feeling alone or i was feeling like nobody cared i'd be extra for other people around me i'd go out my way to make sure like yo you good today like you're happy like you're okay like like don't like don't like are you sure you're okay like don't even worry about me you know because i felt like shit inside and that was my way of masking it you know and then, like, I'd have, like, a good day, you know what I mean? Someone checked on me and everything, but I would still feel terrible. Like, I'd come home, and they're like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm all right. They're like, do you have a bad day? Like, no. Like, my, my day was great. I got paid today. Mm. Saw some girls outside that gave me some smiles. Got a number. And, yeah, when I went home, I felt like shit because I didn't believe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a fluke. That's how I would feel most days. It's just a fluke, you know? Yeah. They just, they just like me today. Tomorrow, everyone hates me. I know when I go home, they just like, like oh, today they like all my posts, like my music today. No, that song sucks tomorrow. Yeah. Let me go back and listen to it like, yo, they like this? He was lying. That's how it feel, you know what I mean? Like, even my friends, like, I'd play something for Mike, you know? Mike's lying, man. He's just saying that because we're friends, because we know each other since a long time. It's wrong, you know what I mean? It's like, you become your own worst enemy. And I started confusing, like, and then I started questioning, like, what's real, what's not? And there's no one, no one can tell you what's real or not. You have to decide that yourself. Yeah. And the best thing I had, like I said, like, I just sat in silence and listened to me. Yeah. And at first it was really hard, you know what I mean? Like, my mind was just like, Tell me all this negative shit. Like, just trying to make me fail. Like, stop doing music. Don't just sit at home. Give up. You fucked up. You know what I mean? I would just hear this shit over and over again. But like I said, like, routine saved me. Now I have a system. I wake up early. I shower. Work out. And go about my day. No excuses. Gotta get out of bed. You know what I mean? Before it was like, smoke weed, whatever, do whatever. But now it's like, nah. Wake up. Shower. Work out. Plan your day. If I don't do that, then my mind wanders, you know? Yeah. And I, I can't. I can't afford to feel that way no more. Because... I don't know, maybe because I'm getting older, but I just don't feel like I have the strength for it no more, you know? That's why I avoid toxic relationships. I'll tell a shorty right away, this is what I'm about. If you don't like it, peace, because I don't have it in me. Yeah. I can't recover. There's only so many times you can hit the reset button, you know? Yeah. 
and it just it weighs like now i feel it physically like my chest you know what i mean like my back will start hurting i didn't do nothing to it i'm not lifting weights you know what i mean it's just depression will manifest itself it'll give you headaches and people don't understand it like oh you're just you're, you're just a sad boy you know you're just being over dramatic you're just being emotional i hate when someone tells me like you're overreacting calm down it's yeah. like yo you don't understand what i'm talking about they're like yo don't yell it's like because you're not listening to me you think i'm just going through the motions it's not an emotion it's a feeling that sits with you and when you go to sleep you wake up it's still there yeah. you go outside the sun's shining beautiful ladies are looking at you nice cars you still feel like shit it's hard to describe it to someone without having it. I'm sure you understand, you know? Yeah, but imagine no, telling sure. someone who's always happy. A lot of the people who listen will probably... Will but they, they don't get it. Like, yeah. I, I was getting an argument, like, not that it's long It's different for a lot of people. So, yeah. like, it's, it's hard for, like, someone to be like, I understand you. Like, you understand them from, like, a certain angle. Not, like, it's like you don't understand. And then like, you tell me you don't, you don't get it. Like, like, you can see part of the image, not the full thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And the I worst mean, you can tell someone with depression is they're being emotional. Oh, yeah. Don't ever say that to someone who's depressed. Yeah. Or you're overreacting. It's like, you don't know how I feel. Like, sometimes I wish I could just take my head off and put it on someone so they can feel it for, like, five minutes. But especially, like, people, like, who come out and tell you they're, like, depressed or that's something. That's a hard... Like, that's being like, so vulnerable. Ex- exactly. Like, they've already done that, and, like, now you're telling them that they're just being emotional. Like That shit makes me... Like, I got so mad, bro. Like, that shit hurt my heart. It's like, yo, you, don't really know, you really don't understand me right now, really. Like... Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Yeah. That's why I'm happy what you're doing because now people don't... Feel, like, you always feel so alone. Like, you're the only one in the world that feels that way, but you're not. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I want to do... That's why I wanted to come on here. It's like, yo, anyone who's listening, like, you're not alone. Like, everyone feels this way. Everyone's just too pussy to say it. Yeah, a lot of people, like I said, ego stands in the way. Or pride. Pride's a big thing, too. Your pride and ego will hold you back from a lot of things. I learned that the hard way. I'm, I'm not allowed to feel. Yeah. I'm not allowed to be weak. I always have to be strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to be weak. I'm allowed to cry. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't make me less of a man. I'll still whoop your ass if I can. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I can take you, I'll take you. I'll do it with tears in my eyes if I have to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather someone beat me up, but I'm, I'm trying my hardest rather than just laying down and dying. You know? Yeah. I'm no. sure it's the same for you, bro. Someone can kick your ass, but you know what? He's, you're going to give him a black eye. You're going to bust his lip or something. Yeah, you're not just no. going to take it. No, definitely. I feel you. Don't ever just take it. I feel no. like. Swing. Yeah. yeah, never take it laying down. That's for sure. <laughs> Go out swinging, bro. Yeah, no, for sure. You're getting through the depression. You just slowly, day by day, just took, took it, it day upon yourself day. like to work on it. Just. Yeah, just did my research about it. I, f- I learned. I figured out ways to help with breathing, with exercise, with music. Like I did... Everything I could possibly get. I just keep my mind busy. I find when my body, when my mind is stagnant, it's really bad. But then that was bad too, because then I was overworking myself. I was yeah. burning out. Elaborate on the research more. Like what kind of research were you doing? Just I would honestly, bro, just on my phone, like ter- like in my room by myself. But like, yo, I'm depressed. What does this mean? How do I help with being depressed? What what are ways you can do it? That's on- I just did my like homework. Like I would pre- I pretend that this is a class and I was learning about my life. Yeah. And I just took it. Even if it was like 20 minutes, yeah. you know what I mean? I would just sit down, okay, it says, yo, take deep breaths and think of something positive. So I would do that. I'd feel okay for a little bit. Boom, right after. You know, I check my phone, bad idea. I was like, now nah, I start making different rules for myself, like no phone after a certain time. Yeah. Or when I first wake up in the morning, don't check my phone. Because yeah. the first thing you do, you go on Instagram. And you're going to start your day just comparing yourself immediately, you know? I was yeah. like, no, take that shit away. But it's hard because then I feel like I'm losing information because I need to be on what's current what's everyone in the city doing i have to do something different what's going on in the music industry i have to do something different you know what i mean what's the latest trend i have to do something different yeah but it's like yo when do i just get to chill when do i get to just enjoy my life like sometimes i just want to run away find a little shack and just live there but i know i wouldn't be satisfied doing that yeah because i'm not helping anyone it's being selfish i hear you thank well in it there man it was it's was good having you on man catching up with you i'm glad that like you're I'm happy in a better you brought, place man. It feels very therapeutic just talking to you, bro. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> there we go. Uh, before we go, I'll let you drop the links and uh, stuff. But again, this is uh, season two, episode eleven with Ocean. I'm your host Hanley. Go ahead, drop the link where they can find you and the uh, the track we're gonna listen to on the close up. So you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Ocean. So at T H E O C three four N. My latest project's Manja More. Go check it out. It's some real shit. And we're going to end the show with one of my favorite songs I did at the top of last year. 
with my good friend, motherfucking Michael Devon, aka Split City, aka Black Case, whatever the fuck you know him as. The song is called Rims. C Money. <laughs> and fucking C Money. I'm with my boy Hanley. I think we did an amazing show. And go spin that shit. Let's make it a good year. Make it a selfish one. Take care of yourself. Not.